Hello, hello, more dimmers here, and welcome to one more game from Magnus Carlsen Invitational 2020. And today we have breaking news because round five was totally insane. And you know why? Because number one, uh, Magnus Carlsen, who won all matches so far, all four rounds, he just won. In the fifth round, uh, he lost to Anish Giri. And Anish Giri uh, lost all the matches so far. So this was pretty amazing um, to happen that uh, Anish Giri, uh, after a series of really, really bad uh, games, he, he found the power, he found the will to fight against the world champion and he won. Moreover, in the same round, uh, other outsider Alireza Firuzia, who also uh, didn't manage to, to win any of the matches, won against Maxime Vasil Lagraf. So pretty interesting round and uh, now the tournament uh, became really, really more exciting. So Magnus Carlsen, current world champion in standard uh, time control, in rapid time control and in blitz, a triple world champion, definitely favorite of this tournament and his ranking in rapid 2881. One. He's 29 years old and he's gonna play as white and Anish Giri 2731. This is his ranking uh, in rapid. Uh, he doesn't play so many tournaments, but he definitely is uh, one of the strongest players in the world in the standard time control top 10. He was in top four already. Um, for now, he's 25 years old and he's gonna play as black. So without further ado, let's jump into the game. Magnus Carlsen open with d4. We have knight on f6, c4, e6, now knight f3, and here uh, Anish Giri can choose what he gonna play. He goes for d5. So we have uh, king's gambit declined, knight on c3, Bishop b4, Ragozin defense, and uh, this was played already against Alireza Firuzia, where uh, Magnus Carlsen managed to win. And uh, interesting that uh, Anish Giri uh, studied this game, definitely he studied this game because he found the improvement to the position, and then uh, this was the you know part of his strategy. So, very interesting. Let's check how that happened. Magnus continues with C takes on D5, E takes on D5, and now Bishop F4. The most popular is Bishop G5. Uh, also Queen A5 attacking the king with the attack on the bishop is possible and the knight C6 continuation. Uh, but Bishop on F4, uh, it's a less popular idea, but Magnus Carlsen liked to play this. And he said in one of the interviews in the Tata Steel that um, he wants the players to be out of the book as they have maybe more time to prepare uh, the new openings, the new lines, and but in this case they never know what he's gonna play. Uh, we have knight on e4 by Anish Giri, so attacking the, the knight, which is pinned already. We have rook on c1 defending, and now knight on c6. Knight on d2, so unpinning the knight, and now one of the knight is pinned, not two. And a similar idea is in the Cambridge Springs variation when you have queen on a5, and this attack with the with the knights on e4 uh, and bishop on uh, b4 are you know happening in the same idea. Uh, however, here a quite different. Black plays very aggressively g5. Okay, this is the uh, main continuation here, and now white can play bishop on g3. This was played a couple of times, not very popular, because after taking, exchanging that, um, white losing this central pawn. So, uh, for example, knight on d4, e3, now bishop on c3, knight e6, and uh, black are up the pawn, uh, and but the white king is quite safe in the center. Also, it's quite easy to develop. This rook can be developed very easy, and black king has to be very careful because it's uh, always vulnerable, especially with the semi-open h file. Also, you know, uh, b file is semi-open, so uh, black also uh, doesn't have easy life with this g5 approach. Uh, however here we have bishop on e3 is the most popular uh, line defending this d4 pawn which is quite important pawn of course now we have knight 
on c3 uh, b takes on c3 and bishop a3 harassing the rook uh, rooks go on b1 to the semi open b5 and now looking on b7 so now it's not easy to develop the bishop light square bishop for black they have to you know waste couple of moves to do that uh, we have f5 and now g3 and this position was reached against uh, Firuzia and Firuzia played uh, castle in that game and now after queen on b3 attacking the bishop and also putting the pressure on d5 uh, it's impossible for for black to play uh, for example bishop on d6 because of this check so losing the central pawn uh, the game uh, with Firuzia was played bishop on e7 that was the continuation and after f4 uh, preventing f4 by black uh, we had knight on e5 uh, queen on c2 c6 bishop on g2 and everything was fine with the white position and uh, and magnus carlsen managed to win that game uh, so here anish giri improved the position and he played bishop on d6 bishop on d6 so now there is no queen uh, on d5 of course it can be played but uh, after f4 the bishop is trapped okay for example g takes on f4 g takes on f4 and uh, queen on d5 yes it's possible queen on e7 now bishop f4 uh, so winning this bishop e3 and uh, bishops go back to d6 now rook on g1 and look at this position especially rook on g1 and queen on d5 and and all other pieces so uh, magnus carlsen didn't go for queen on b3 he played rook on g1 and here anish giri were thinking like a seven or eight minutes he spent half of the time uh, he had to to figure out what to play now if he goes for f4 this is by the way the most uh, the strongest move recommended by the engine then look what would we have g takes on f4 and almost the same line we just had e3 now queen e7 pinning the the pawn queen h5 now uh, king d8 queen d5 uh, bishop d6 and we have exactly the same position but now white have the move uh, with the rook on g1 already okay there is the king on d8 not on e8 uh, but that's all the difference and white uh, won one tempo here so uh, definitely magnus carlsen know this position very well but uh anish giri didn't go for that he play uh, he didn't play also queen on e7 because after knight on f3 uh, the bishop would gone okay there are no more trap here so he didn't go for that uh he went for the castle here uh quite risky it looks like very risky to put the king on the same line uh with the rook but that's what happened and now if knight on f3 actually this is not the greatest move uh, by magnus carlsen uh he didn't play that because of h6 and now if he plays h4 anish would have g4 okay and this knight has nowhere to go uh it can't go to h4 anymore so um that is the problem so i uh, would have to go back and this is very comfortable position for black so Magnus Carlsen would achieve nothing here this is why he start from h4 first and here uh, again what to play definitely you cannot play h6 this is this is just losing move because after exchanging the pawns bishop g2 with the attack on this pawn now a knight on e7 bishop g5 pinning this knight so black would have to play something like c6 now e3 unleashing all the power so now uh, rook can come here queen can come here you know join the party make some mating ideas here so definitely not the greatest idea to play that uh, h6 better g4 g4 was possible that was one of the best recommendation and now uh, position is quite different knight on e7 and a bishop g5 not losing the pawn but also after c6 there are no threats there are no open uh, semi open h file so that is a huge difference and improvement but anish giri didn't go for that he goes f4 it looks like very crazy move especially with the rook on the on the g file however uh what to play now as magnus carlsen so uh, we have g takes on f4 and now g4 
And this is the position where Magnus Carlsen have to make his move, very critical position, and he has to choose a correct plan. And in studio, when we had the live commentary, uh, Lawrence Trent uh, found a very interesting line, and this is also a funny story behind that. Um, knight on f3, this is of course a good move, uh, c4 also is quite okay, uh, and now king on h8, getting away from that pin, so now uh, the knight is under attack, knight can jump to e5, uh, is protected twice, so definitely very safe here. Now queen on h4, bishop g2, Queen h2 attacking the rook, so defending, uh, and now g3, and it looks like white can trap the queen, uh, but now feel free to pause the video and find the winning move for black, while I enjoy my cup of tea. Okay, ready? So bishop on h3, this is the winning move and uh, white can do anything. This bishop is pinned, okay? So if bishop takes on h3, then we will have a checkmate. If rook takes the queen, which looks good, then we have this problem, okay? And now the pawn controls g1 and the bishop is still controlled. So a pawn is coming gonna be promoted. So the only move is actually king on e1. Now bishop g2, king d2 and now promotion, uh, exchange all these pieces. And now black has extra rook, which is uh, of course uh, enough to win the game. So uh, very interesting line. However, rook on h1 don't need to be played. Uh, knight on f3 is enough, harassing the queen. And if queen moves, then just solidify the position and everything is great for white. White actually stands much better here. So uh, it was very, very interesting line. However, Magnus Carlsen goes for his interesting line and he play rook on b5, attacking the pawn. So uh, black has to do something about that. We have knight on e7, defending. And now Magnus play f5 as continuation of his plan. Very strong move, uh, making a space for the bishop. So now bishop can be brought to h6, very strong uh, position here. And after e4, Queen can come to g4, rook can support, and now there are some mating ideas here. Very dangerous position, definitely. Uh, also, uh, bishop can come to g5, okay, pinning this knight, and then uh, this pawn gonna be under attack. So what to do here? Uh, if bishop takes on f5, for example, uh, then bishop h6, attacking the rook, now rook f7, and now e4, and looks how strong is that. Now, bishop can't take it because of the rook and the queen, and then there would be some mating ideas here, so better not to do that. If d takes on e4, it's, it's even worse, because bishop c4 now pinning this rook, and it's already very difficult. Now, this rook attacking the bishop, and uh, also we have these ideas. All too much. So bishop takes on f5 definitely doesn't work. What if rook... Uh, goes on f5. The problem is now this pawn is not protected. So rook on g4, king on h8, uh, knight f3, and white stands uh, just better. King is safe, uh, this king gonna be hunted, so um, definitely not comfortable. But interesting is that knight on f5, which doesn't look good at all, it actually works in the black's favor. But it's difficult to find uh, this move especially in the rapid uh, time format. If you have five minutes on the clock and you have to find a move like that and continuation, look at that. Rook on g4, king h8, bishop g5 attacking the queen, but now black has the move, which really difficult to spot. Knight on e3, attacking the queen, attacking the rook, uh, if bishop takes it, then uh, the rook is gone, okay, so that is the one thing. Uh, if f takes on e3, then bishop on g4 and checkmate is coming, okay, so there is no time to take it. So for example, queen on b3, making the space queen d7, and black stands better here, okay. 
So very dangerous position, but better for black. Actually, this is better for black. After this knight on e3, which is which is really difficult to spot, that is, we can call it engine line. Maybe uh, players would find it, you know, over the board in the standard time uh, time control, but uh, but in the rapid, uh, definitely very very crazy line. Uh, what would have to be played here, like queen on b1, or just exchange the the queens this way, and that would be possible, but. Uh, but it's it's still better for for black so uh this was not played this was not played the uh, anish giri didn't find it he play h5 solidifying this um these pawns and say okay what are you gonna do now and here magnus carlsen continue his plan bishop g5 now uh, pinning this knight and knight is defending uh, d5 so uh, black has to react somehow we have c6 bringing another defender to the pawn and also doing that with tempo because now rook is under attack so rook have to move to b2 and now there is a time for uh, black to pick up the pawn on f5 can do it the, with the bishop of course because b7 is still hanging so it's impossible uh, so rook on f5 and now e4 by magnus carlsen uh, opening the diagonals for the bishop if needed and for the queen if needed here and also attacking the rook what to play now if black plays something like d takes on e4 look at this queen on uh, b3 bishop on c4 both attacking the, the the position of the king knight on f6 this is also possible now uh, f3 is possible okay with the with the rook on the same uh, line with the king not comfortable position also the knight is pinned so can't help in defense okay this bishop also is guarding b7 this rook doesn't play so that would be definitely very difficult position to play uh, for black probably lost position uh, but anish giri found here uh, absolutely the best move and he sacrificed the exchange he thought okay this bishop is worth more than my rook and uh, i'm gonna take it because this bishop is just you know monster bishop i don't want to see it here so uh, we have h takes on g5 now knight g6 uh, preparing to capture the g5 pawn and now e5 we have bishop on f8 bishop on d3 attacking the knight and knight on f4 now attacking this bishop and here magnus carlsen could go for for some plan like this uh, bishop on b1 and after queen on g5 queen c2 Okay, that's interesting. This is some mating ideas, but uh, can be very easy uh, defended. Queen h6 and all is fine. Knight f1 with plan knight on e3 and maybe jumping somewhere there, but uh, that would be the continuation. Magnus Carlsen didn't want to do all of that. That's too many moves. So he play knight on f1 immediately. Uh, we have queen on g5. And now in this position, believe me or not he didn't follow uh, his plan he didn't go knight on e3 okay this was absolutely the best move and uh, then he could continue uh, his plan instead he also wanted to play a bit faster and play f3 making a space for the rook so now rook could join the attack on the king and it could be very dangerous if not one little fact so feel free to pause the video right now and win the game against magnus carlsen while i enjoy my cup of tea okay ready uh, yes, Magnus Carlsen just blundered the game uh, by the move on f3. He missed the tactic. He missed the tactic. And uh, not sure if it's easy or, or not easy to spot. Uh, you have to take a while or you have to know the tactics really, really well. Uh, the idea is uh, to actually uh, attack the undefended rook. Now the rook is undefended. And it would be good if you can attack it, for example, uh, with the fork. That would be nice if it's possible. Is it possible? Uh, Anish Giri think it's possible and he found this move. Knight on d3 with check and something has to be done. Uh, queen on d3 and now the move I just show you. And here we have king on f2. Queen on b2 and Anish Giri won the piece. 
but black are not only up the piece but also there is a check which is very important because white could have a very nasty perpetual check ideas if uh, for example bishop on g7 then we would have you know here that would be uh, the perpetual check so uh, white still have a chance drawing chances here uh, we have knight on d2 but anish giri don't give any chances here and he play beautiful bishop f5 move deflection of the queen and uh, now white have to do something queen on e3 uh, is of course possible but magnus carlsen uh, prefers to take the bishop and now we have queen on d2 with check again king on g3 now queen on c3 so anish giri uh, just pick up the pawns we have king on h4 with idea of taking on h5 and then we would have some mating ideas this is already very very dangerous uh, but Anish Giri play queen on d4 very calmly just pick up another pawn but this pawn is very important uh, because now we have attack on the rook so whatever plan you have you cannot you know just uh, checkmate with the queen uh, so we have rook on g3 keeping the rook still uh, on this file uh, but now bishop on g7 uh, we have f4 uh, and now Magnus Carlsen have two connected past pawn, but of course it doesn't matter. Rook f8 and in this position Magnus Carlsen resign the game. So uh, Anish Giri won. This was the game number three. First two games were drawn. Then Magnus Carlsen lost this game. And uh, in the last game he didn't manage to win against Anish Giri. So Anish Giri won the match. So that's breaking news, I think. A uh, very interesting tournament now. Congratulations to Anish Giri. And uh, Magnus Carlsen resigned because he has nothing to do. If queen on h5, let's say, uh, rook f4, and uh, there is no perpetual, of course. Uh, queen e8, king h7, queen h5. Now we have uh, bishop on h6. There are no more checks because the, the rook controls. Uh, queen e8 to give more checks, but it's uh, queen f2 now. Uh, checkmate is coming and uh, not much to do. Queen e7, maybe bishop g7, and now the rook's gonna fall. Uh, so, uh, yeah, there are no, no good moves here now. And, uh, and yeah, that's, that's just end of the game. King g5 and now queen h6 and it's just checkmate. So uh, this is why, of course, uh, Magnus Carlsen resigned the game. He don't see any chances, any counterplay. Uh, if he gonna lose this pawn, that's uh, everything. All this position gonna, gonna fall very fast. So that's all for today. And if you don't want to miss uh, any other games from Magnus Carlsen Invitational 2020, uh, press subscribe, smash the bell button. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.